everyone. Welcome to the session on consumer decision making. I am Sachi Arora and I am an adjunct faculty at James Lind University, Switzerland. In today's session, I am going to be discussing about one of the most important aspects of consumer behavior called consumer decision making. You know, when a consumer goes to purchase a product in the market, the process is not as simple as it seems to be on the surface. There are so many factors involved in determining whether a consumer will decide to buy that product or not. So yes, in today's session, we are going to be diving deeper into the factors and processes that are underlying a consumer's decision to purchase our product or not. So let's go forward and see what we're going to be learning about today. We're going to be starting with factors that are involved in a consumer's behavior in the market. Then we're going to go ahead with understanding the needs, the goals and the role of motivation in a consumer deciding to buy a product. And finally, the stages through which a consumer goes through in order to make a decision for purchasing or not purchasing a particular product. As we go forward, like I said, there are quite a few factors that are involved in determining the purchase of a particular product by a consumer. So let's understand these factors. Before we do that, I would like to ask you all a few questions. Why do you attend lectures? Is it because your exams are coming close and you want to pass them? Or do you want to acquire knowledge? Why do you prefer Instagram over Facebook or Facebook over Instagram? Is it because most of your friends are over one platform over the other? Why do you prefer online lectures over offline lectures or offline lectures over online lectures? Some people like online lectures because they can do it from the comfort of their home. Some people prefer offline lectures because it gives them a chance to interact with their fellow mates and their facilitators. Well, there are so many reasons behind what we do and therefore it's so difficult to judge a behavior from the surface. That's exactly what happens with consumers as well. When they go for shopping, there are so many reasons behind which they behave in a way they behave at the market. So let us look at all those reasons and factors. As we go forward, what makes a consumer buy a product in the market? There are three factors involved here. One is the ability. Second is the opportunity. And third is the motivation to buy a product. Now, for example, let us look at a health product that has been newly launched in the market. Now, the founder of the health product company is saying that this health product can make you lose weight and improve your immunity. And this will actually improve the health and functioning of anyone who consumes the product. Now, say this product is very expensive, but the consumer has the affordability and the finances and the resources to buy the product. That is, it makes the consumer able to buy the product. He has the ability to buy the product. Number two, the health product is being sold in a shop very close to his house at a discounted price, which leads to an increase in the opportunity for the consumer to conveniently go and access the product. That also at a discounted price, so gives him all the more reason to go and buy it. Thirdly, the consumer is also motivated, that is, he is driven to buy that product because he has been noticing that he has gained a lot of weight in the last few days and his health is also deteriorating. So all these three factors combined will make the consumer go and purchase the product because he has the ability to do so, there is an opportunity as well and thirdly, he is motivated also. Now, what is motivation exactly? Motivation is nothing but a need or a requirement which is at the physical or the psychological level. So when a consumer believes or feels that he is physically or psychologically deprived and requires something, then he will feel the need for it. And if he feels that once he fulfills the need, there is an incentive he's going to get, be it an internal incentive, or an external incentive that will automatically lead to a buying behavior. So for example, in this case, the consumer had a physical requirement, which is he wanted to improve his health and he wanted to lose his weight. So that 
led him to believe that he needs the product he needs the product so that he can lose the weight and improve his health which would automatically make him believe that this will give him a lot of incentives or a lot of rewards internally he will feel more confident he will feel that he is better at his functioning and externally he will also be able to get approval of his loved ones because he will lose weight and start to appear desirable so because of the incentives involved and his own personal internal needs involved in the process he ends up going and buying the product so see there are factors involved like needs incentives ability opportunity and motivation that finally leads a consumer to buy a product no matter how expensive it be now let us look at the driving force of course how does a consumer realize that he needs to finally go and buy the product the very first step in the process is the consumer realizes that he has some unfulfilled needs or desires that is he has certain unfulfilled physical or psychological requirements that leads to a rise in the tension in his body or mind there is a state of tension that is he realizes that what he desires and what he actually has are two different things and therefore he desires for something more his body and his mind starts to be in a state of tension which automatically drives him and determines the consumer to look for product in the market or to look for something that can fulfill his needs so he starts to learn about the product he starts to understand the product and then finally goes on to seeing whether he needs to buy the product or not let's take an example for example the consumer is in the market for shopping and he realizes the unfulfilled need of hunger he feels like he's hungry and he needs food now what happens is his body starts to create a sense of tension in his body his stomach starts giving him stomach pangs and he suddenly starts to feel a little drowsy because he is so hungry and eaten nothing since morning now because of the tension created in the body he is suddenly driven and determined to find out food outlets around him so he will look around him he will see the food outlets and he will probably start exploring that means he will start learning what are the food outlets available around him and then he will engage in cognitive processes like he will start to evaluate which outlet is better than the other so if he is on a diet then he will see that okay you know i have to go to a healthier place which has healthy options of food if he wants to go for a cheaper place because he does not have enough money in hand then he would actually go for an outlet which is cheaper even if it's not serving healthy food so he's going to evaluate his options his alternatives and see which alternative option is better and has more advantages for the consumer and finally after engaging in these evaluation and evaluative processes and cognitive processes he's finally going to engage in a behavior that will lead to fulfillment of his goals that is satisfying his hunger now this can happen not only for physical needs like hunger this can op- often happen for acquired needs also like maybe a consumer realizes that his friend has got a very big car and then he suddenly realizes the unfulfilled need of him having a car he realizes that he has a very small car and he needs a bigger one now this creates a sense of psychological tension in his mind that you know i have a smaller car and my friend has a bigger one and then he is finally driven to look into the market and see what are the cars available in the market so he starts to learn about the options of cars available in the market and then finally engages in those cognitive processes he will look at five six cars five six brands evaluate which car would be better for him he will see the features the pricing the quality the brand of each car and then finally decide the options and choose one alternative over the other alternatives because he might find them to have more advantageous features over the other which would finally lead to a behavior of choosing one product over others and fulfilling his goals so yes needs and goals of the consumer are constantly changing like today the consumer might want food tomorrow he might want a car day after tomorrow he might want a laptop because his exams are approaching and he needs to study so needs and goals will always change depending on your abilities opportunities and motivation today you might have a higher ability 
tomorrow you might have a lower today you might have higher opportunity tomorrow you might have lower opportunity so motivation ability and opportunity keeps changing your needs and your goals keep changing and therefore we can expect the consumer also to change with the evolving times now what is the decision making process that a consumer engages in let's look at it so there are quite a few external and internal influences that to begin with now external influences could be like i said you know your, your a consumer's friend got a laptop and then the consumer realized that oh even i need a laptop because my friend got one even i would need it for my exams your family could be an influence social media could be an influence where you know on social media everybody has an iphone everybody has a laptop everybody is you know having health products for weight loss so social media plays a huge role in you know buying uh, and purchasing behavior in the market family plays a huge role influencers play a huge role whatever the influencer is consuming the consumer would want to consume that brands endorsements all of these could be external influences over a consumer internal influences could be the consumer's own needs own goals like the consumer's goal is to buy a prestigious car for himself or the consumer's internal need is to buy food for himself so there could be internal and external influences and when the consumer realizes that there's a difference between his actual current state and the state that he desires to be in so he realizes that you know he has a smaller car and he needs a bigger one or he has a old laptop and he needs a new one so when he realizes the difference between what he desires and what he has that is when he starts to feel dissatisfied with what he has he starts to feel the need for a new product and he starts to expect better satisfaction from the new product so if i feel like my laptop is getting too old and i'm not satisfied with it that is when i will feel like i need a new one and the need will only go higher when my friend has one and then i would compare and all these external and internal influences would play a role into me purchasing that particular product so yes the very first step is the consumer recognizes the need to buy something like i said the consumer recognizes that his exams are approaching all his friends have a new laptop or a you know new model of a laptop and he realizes he has a old one so internal need because he wants to succeed in his exam that need for achievement in his exam is an internal influence due to which he wants to buy the laptop and the external influences that all his friends have bought one so these external and internal influences make him recognize a need that i need a laptop too and then he starts to go to the second stage which is information search he will start to you know ask his friends about different brands about a laptop he will start to look up on the internet on the social media he will start becoming aware about all the options available to him in terms of which laptop is better than the other he will research about the price of the laptop the quality of the laptop the features of the laptop the size of the laptop he will try to see the advantages and disadvantages of each laptop available in the market and then comes the third step where he will evaluate all the alternatives so supposing he gets to know that in the market there are five kinds of laptop available he will try to look at the pricing the features of each laptop and see which laptop suits his needs and his goals the most based on that he will choose one laptop that is having the highest suitability as per his ability his needs and his goals and then he will finally go on to purchase the laptop that is best suited for him leading to the last stage in the process that is the post purchase evaluation where he will finally purchase the product but after the purchase there can be two possibilities one is the consumer will be satisfied with the product or second is he will regret the product if he is satisfied with the product he will recommend it to his friends and he will probably repeat its purchase in the future and if he is dissatisfied he will probably go back to ask for refund and he will never go and buy the same product again so as you can see there are so many factors and such complex processes involved in terms of a consumer deciding whether they want want to buy a product or not and hence this complex process so many factors involved are extremely necessary to understand a consumer's behavior in the market
I hope that this session was insightful and helpful to each one of you. Thank you so much for watching the session and have a great day.